Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us in the Quran repeatedly about that moment. Do you know what the, what, what's the definition of death? People say, you know, the end of life. It's not. I mean, we all know it's not the end of life. It's just the beginning of a new stage in our lives. That's all. We know that people who are dead have a different type of life, have a different type of feelings. They go through different experiences, but they are alive. It's a different type of life. So what's the difference? Death, in simple words, is the end of choice. That's it, period. Death is the end of choice. Reflect upon that. Think about it. Throughout this world, throughout this life, you have choice. And that's what Allah has given you. That's, what, that's how Allah has favored you over everything else. You have choice. The moment you die, choice is taken away. After death, you don't, you don't make any decisions. It's done. It's done. And subhanAllah, there are two types of choice. There's choice that is given to humanity in general. Muslim and non-Muslim. People who worship Allah and people who worship graves and people who worship trees and people who worship their desires. They're all given this kind of favor. Which is choice that we talked about, but it's limited because there are things we cannot control. There are things that happen against our will. Natural disasters, death of close people, loved ones, different events beyond our control. Those who practice this first gift well, with a sense of responsibility, Allah has given me the choice, I'll make the right choice. I will make the right choice. So you start making the right choices in this life. Once you die, Allah will take you to a higher level of choice and that's on the day of judgment. In this world, you have options to choose from. On the day of judgment in paradise for people who handle this responsibility, the way Allah loves, they will get a high level of choice in paradise. They have options to choose from and they have options to create and figure out. The Prophet ﷺ said about the people of paradise that whatever goes through their minds, any idea that goes through their minds, Allah will make it real for them. That's a higher level of choice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ar-Rahman, هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ is the recompense of goodness and perfection anything other than goodness and perfection? Absolutely not. You're dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most generous. So think about your life. Now this khutbah is not to entertain you. Khutbah puts things in perspective. It aims at helping you think about life the way Allah wants you. Taking life seriously. I know that a lot of people sometimes, and you can hear it in some masajid and by some dua, they will tell you, you know, keep away from this dunya and make sure that you, know, you dedicate your life for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dunya is cursed and you know, you need to keep away from it. But that's not the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because who gave us this dunya? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He created it. He put it at our service. That's what he says in the Quran. He created everything for you, for your service. So a lot of people have got the wrong notion and they bring some words from the companions, some words from the early generations to support their point or to support their interpretation that in order to make it to paradise, you need to divorce this life with everything in it. Live as a hermit. Live, you know, be aloof in this life and just, you know, make sure you, you detach yourself from everything. But who created this? Who created money? Who created all the wealth that we have, all the attractions, all the temptations? Who created them? Allah created them. Why did He create them? He created them to help us make it to paradise. These are the means to paradise. Money is your means to paradise. You have good reputation, good family. That's your means to paradise. You have some gifts and talents. You have some skills. That's your gate to paradise. 
That's how we should view this world. The Prophet Sallallahu he had an experience with a new Muslim at his time. One of the great companions, Amr ibn al-As, just two months in Islam, two months, the Prophet ﷺ sends him as the leader of a military expedition, as a Muslim army. He's the leader. Who was under his reign? Abu Bakr and Umar, under his leadership. He's a new Muslim. But the Prophet ﷺ, he could read people. He could see through, the, through, their, through their actions. He could, he could read the hearts and their minds. So he said to Amr ibn al-As, I'm sending you on, a, on an expedition and you're going to win and you're going to get a lot of spoils of war and you will get so much wealth. Amr ibn al-As said, O Messenger of Allah, ma ala hadha tabatuk. I didn't follow you for money. I followed you to make it to Jannah, to please Allah. So I, I followed you for the sake of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ wanted to correct that notion. You need to understand life well. You can't, you know, you should avoid both extremes. People who worship the dunya and people who just want to, to, to detach themselves from anything in this dunya. The Prophet ﷺ told him, نعم المال الصالح للرجل الصالح. What a great thing to have goodly money in the hands of a goodly man. Because that's your means to paradise. The rich people you know, they have more opportunity to make it through money to paradise. Other people, they might have skills, they might have talents, they might have other gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you should find out exactly what's your route to paradise. What is the special gift Allah has given you? What, what has Allah favored you with that is so special that you can use it to get to paradise? Khalid ibn al-Walid was a military leader. That was, he was gifted. That's his gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did he do? He used it for the sake of Allah. He was the ultimate military leader in, in the history of Islam. Some narrations even indicate that one day he was leading his army, leading the prayer, and he made a mistake in Surah Al-Kafirun. That's Khalid ibn al-Walid. So he made a mistake after the prayer. He said, Shaghalani al-Jihad an al-Quran. He said, he said Jihad. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, kept me busy. So I didn't pay enough attention to the Quran. Khalid ibn Walid, with all his greatness, he only narrated in the, all, all of the books of hadith, he only has three hadith that he narrated personally. Does that undermine his, undermine his position? Absolutely not. On the contrary, he's a man who read himself well. And he understood exactly what Allah gifted him with and he used it. To make it straight to paradise, he took a shortcut to paradise. That's what the dunya means. Allah didn't give us this dunya to distract us. He gave it to us to use it right. Now, if it distracts you, that's your choice. You made the wrong choice. You gave the wrong meaning to life. You gave the wrong definition about money or about wealth or about anything Allah has given you. And it distracted you. It, it's, your it's your choice. The definitions and the meanings you give to things are your choice. So when someone says, I get out of control, I can't control myself, I can't control my actions, he's just lying to himself, he's fooling himself. That's all what it is. Because on the day of judgment, he will acknowledge that I had choice. So don't fool yourself, brothers and sisters. Don't fool yourself. That's what life is about, it's choice. It's choice. And the small choices that you make in this world will build up and will choose your ultimate destination. The ultimate destiny, either paradise or the hellfire. So we'll close with this thing. Take a moment to think about your life. Have I been using this talent or this gift of choice wisely as Allah wants me to do? Do I understand the responsibility? Do I, do I understand that I'm responsible for every action I do? Every action, every deliberate action, every word I say, Every letter, you're responsible for it. And if you think otherwise, you're fooling yourself. And that's the story of the creation. When Allah told the angels, I'm going to create a Khalifa. A Khalifa on earth. What did the angels say? They didn't know anything about human beings, about Adam. What did they say? They said, Are you going to place on earth a creation that's going to shed blood and bring about mischief? How did they know? They don't know humans, they have no clue, because humans had not been created at the time. How did they know?
Because the word Khalifa means you have choice. You're given a responsibility. You're entrusted with it. And you make the choice. This is why the angels knew that if a creation has choice, it will bring about corruption because the best thing is Allah's choice. So how can we get Allah, Allah's choice in our lives? The Quran and this authentic sunnah. Simple. Follow the example of the Prophet ﷺ. Avoid the haram and do your obligations and follow only what's halal. That's it. So simple. Such an easy way to paradise. So life is a matter of choice, brothers and sisters. Make sure you make your choices the best way and take them seriously. It's not a joke because the moment of death comes and don't be among the people who only wake up at that moment.